we're going to be looking at the alpha particle scattering experiment which led to the discovery of the nucleus of an atom. Before the discovery of the nucleus, we had Thompson's plum pudding model of the atom. And the model was that the atom was made like a solid sphere, a dough of the plum pudding of positive charge. And embedded in the sphere were negative charges, which were the plums in the plum pudding. And overall, the atom was neutral. The alpha particle scattering experiment overturned this model of the atom to the present model that we have now. The experiment involved firing very high energy alpha particles in a vacuum at a very thin gold foil. They needed a vacuum so that the alpha particles would travel unobstructed to the gold foil so that they would be no collisions with any air molecules. The zinc sulfide screen detected the alpha particles as they produced a tiny flash of light when the alpha particles hit the screen. And these tiny flashes of light could be viewed through the microscope. The microscope was moved around the screen to detect the alpha particles hitting the screen at different angles. Here, this table of results is showing you a modern set of results of the number of alpha particles that were scattered at the different angles. So the table shows that most of the alpha particles pass straight through the gold foil. Most had a very small deflection angle. However, a small number were deflected at very large angles, that is over 90 degrees. And about 1 in 8,000 were back scattered. And this is representing a backscattering that it is an angle of deflection of 180 degrees. Rutherford found this backscattering incredible and imagined that if you fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue, you would not expect the shell to rebound from the tissue and hit you. So that is. You wouldn't expect firing high energy alpha particles as a thin gold foil to backscatter. Thompson's plum pudding model could not explain the large angle deflections of the alpha particles or even the backscattering of the alpha particles because the positive charge of the gold atoms were too spread out to produce such large angle deflections. So Ernest Rutherford analysed the results from the experiment and he made these conclusions about the atom saying that it was mostly empty space and the atom nearly had all its mass concentrated in a very small volume, which represented the nucleus, and the nucleus was positively charged. Can you work out how Rutherford made these conclusions from the results? The atom is mostly empty space because most of the alpha particles pass straight through that is, most of the positively charged alpha particles were not coming close to the positively charged gold nucleus to be deflected. So the atom has a massive, but tiny, positively charged nucleus because a small number of alpha particles were deflected at very large angles. So 
you had a small number of positively charged alpha particles coming close to the positively charged gold nucleus to be deflected at large angles. The positively charged alpha particles were being deflected at very large angles because they were experiencing an electrostatic repulsion force from the positively charged nucleus. That repulsion force is the Coulomb's law of electrostatics. And we needed to use a gold nucleus because it has enough charge to produce a large enough electrostatic force of repulsion to get observable deflecting angles for the alpha particles. Also, you had to use a thin foil of gold in order to reduce the number of layers of gold atoms the alpha particles pass through, which could distort the results of the deflecting angles. And finally here, you can see the, when the alpha particle makes a head-on approach with the gold nucleus, it experiences the maximum electrostatic force of repulsion and so experiences 180 degrees deflection, so that is, it becomes backscattered. So to recap, most of the atom is empty space and the nucleus contains most of the mass but occupies a very small volume in the atom and hence it's very dense. So the approximate size of the atom is 10 to the minus 10 metres and the approximate size of the nucleus is 10 to the minus 14 metres. So that's a difference of 10,000.